Well, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to the Calgary Power Reception Hall here at the Calgary Municipal Complex. I'm thrilled to be joined here by Minister of Finance Joe CC, who I understand has been in this building once or twice before, but not in this room anyway. Uh, it's thrilled. It's a thrill to have you back at City Hall. Uh, I'm sure you're feeling a little bit homesick, uh, and I'm thrilled to be joined by a number of my council colleagues, including your successor, Councillor Jean-Carlo Carra, uh, who is there as well, still trying to fill your shoes after all this time. Big shoes, big shoes. And very cool shoes, too. We're here today to talk about the next phase in our long-standing conversation about the city charters and to share some news with you. So with that, I will turn it over to Mr. Cece. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Go ahead. Um, it's my pleasure to be here today, and you're right, this is, uh, does feel like kind of old home week, uh, walking around and looking at uh, all the rooms and paintings and places I remember so well. Um, and uh, I, uh, uh, it's great to see you all, all members of council who are here and administration. Um, I want to say good afternoon to everyone. Uh, Mayor Nancy, I am here today to mark, and I are here today to mark the completion of the first phase of the city charters uh, to talk about what that means for both of us and our respective orders of government, and also to look at what's next in our ongoing relationship, uh, the province and the city charters and the city of Calgary in particular. City charters, phase one, are now in place for the cities of Edmonton and Calgary. That gives our two largest cities new tools to adapt municipal laws to better fit the needs of their citizens. For example, this means that things like assessments and tax notices can be sent electronically if requested, in saving money of course, and cities can develop plans to mitigate climate change. This latest step, or phase one, is worth celebrating, but it's important to note that things are not ending here. We'll be continuing our conversations with Calgary and Edmonton to develop a new fiscal framework and a long-term transit investment plan that ensures each city is transit friendly and accessible for years and years to come. These conversations will build on the $3 billion already in LRT funding for Edmonton and Calgary that was mentioned in Budget 2018. With that, I'm going to turn things over to the mayor for a few minutes, and then I'm happy to answer questions. Thanks very much, Minister. Well, seven years, five premiers, nine ministers of municipal affairs. I actually haven't counted on the ministers of finance. Only one important one. Only one important one. Uh, and here we are, uh, finally, at a point where we can share some of the great successes we've had in building this city charter. Make no mistake. The building of a city charter for Calgary, as well as a city charter for Edmonton, is the largest legislative change in terms of how the cities work since the province was created in 1905. And I'm thrilled that we are able to be here, and it's taken a lot of work from a lot of people to get us here. So off the top, I want to say thank you to my council colleagues who have been unwavering in their support of this project all of this time, uh, and really have been helpful in providing direction and understanding to all of that. I particularly want to say thank you to the staff, to the City of Calgary Administration, the City of Edmonton Administration, and to the province of Alberta, um, government staff, uh, both in municipal affairs and in finance, who have been working so hard to bring us to this point today. And I actually should just say those two departments have been cross ministry. So a special thank you to all of them. This has obviously been one of my priorities since the day I started in this job, and I'm really pleased that our provincial government has made it a priority as well. So let me tell you a little bit about what's been enacted. Uh, my notes actually say these regulations are not particularly sexy. I think they're extremely sexy. Uh, because when we talk about streamlining processes and assessment and taxation, the example the Ministry CC gave about uh, electronic notice has the potential of saving the city of Calgary hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Uh, new things around how we do uh, advertising, how we do public notices, all of this is extremely helpful. Streamlining our assessment system will help homeowners and businesses to be able to make sure that our system is fair throughout. So these are important regulations. They allow our city council and future councils to make decisions on things that affect Calgary. You may recall all those years ago when we first talked about city charters, I talked about the endless game of pass the buck that cities in the province love to do. 
That is a great priority, go talk to the city. That is a great priority, go have the province fund it. We can do it all day. And the net result is we never get it done. And passing on those decision-making tools to this government, to the city of Calgary, a government with high capacity to be able to do things and great talent is an incredibly important part of what we're doing. It gives us as a council the ability to act on things Calgarians have told us are important to them. I'll give you one simple example foreshadowing something I expect my council colleagues will want to have a good debate about. Residential speed limits. Citizens have been telling us for years that they would love to see a reduction of the speed limit in residential areas. But under the current rules, we just couldn't do it without signing every single street. And the cost is absolutely prohibitive. Under the charter, the regulations give us the flexibility to find solutions that work for Calgarians, and we can start doing that right away. So what comes next? This first wave of regulations are now in place. We're expecting the second wave of regulations will be coming right away. I'm hoping today. Uh, and included in those regulations are a number of things, but the most important one for us will be uh, putting a system around the work that we've been doing with developers for years on off-site levies. This is actually an issue, you may recall, in the past election I called it the suburban sprawl subsidy. It's an issue that is actually billions and billions of dollars for the city of Calgary. And I'm thrilled that the previous council unanimously endorsed a solution that the development industry came to the table and also endorsed the same solution. But it's extremely important to make this permanent within provincial regulations and provincial frameworks. And this next phase of the charters will allow us to do that, but allow us to fund growth in a way that growth pays for itself and growth makes sense for Calgarians. As Minister Cece pointed out, there's a lot of work left to be done. And there's a lot of work left to be done on money. And so a couple of the big conversations that we'll continue to have are the ones that he highlighted for us. One is around revenue sharing, and the other is around long-term transit planning. So it is crucial that we get a revenue sharing arrangement, a new fiscal framework in place with the provincial government. As we know, the city of Calgary is doing its part to help with fiscal balance in the province, and part of that has been a cut to the MSI program, our infrastructure funding program from the province. That means that Calgary requires stable and predictable funding now and into the future. Particularly as we take on mega projects like the Green Line, we need to be able to borrow money with a good sense of when we'll be able to pay that back. We need to be able to plan for the future in a more thoughtful way. So there's never been a more important time for stable, predictable, long-term funding. And the revenue sharing discussions that we're having with the government of Alberta will help get us there. What it means is that when the province does well, the city does well. And likewise, when the economy is down, we'll share in the pain as well. But ultimately, it allows for better planning for all of us. Because as all of you know, the system that we've been operating under all these years is when the province is rich, the city is poor. When the province is poor, the city is still poor. And being able to change, being able to participate in the ups and the downs allows us to have not just shock absorbers to the economy, but do thoughtful countercyclical things as well. It makes a big difference. And of course, the largest investments we're making and among the most important investments we make as a community are investments in public transit. We are very thankful for the funding for the Green Line as well as other public transit projects that the province has been forthcoming with, but we need a long-term plan. We need to finish the Green Line. We need to bring the Green Line to Stony Trail in the north. We need to bring the Green Line to Stony Trail in the south. And it's very important for us to figure out how to do that as well as fund our other important transit priorities in the route ahead plan. It's a commitment to long-term investment and it's absolutely critical. Ultimately, the city charters are about recognizing that the cities of Calgary and Edmonton are half of the population of Alberta. That the city of Edmonton is nearly 10, by itself, is nearly 10 times the size of the third largest city in Alberta. The city of Calgary, as you've heard me say many, many times, is a large and sophisticated organization. The city of Calgary is larger in population than five provinces of Canada. And by the end of the next decade, it'll probably be larger than the six, depending on how the Jets do in the playoffs. As a result, we need to work with the provincial government, not as a junior order of government or a subsidiary level of government, but as equal partners. And that is what we will continue to do, and I'm really happy that we've been able to work together with this government as partners. As part of the charter table, we as part of the charter, we've established collaboration tables where we can work together on issues of mutual interest. So for example, yesterday we had a great council meeting, that's an interesting adjective I just used, uh, on cannabis. 
And that is absolutely an area where we continue to work together and need to continue to work together to make sure we have regulations and a financial system that makes sense for Albertans. But today we get to celebrate a little bit. Today we get to celebrate the ending of this first phase, we get to celebrate our partnership, and we get to celebrate our commitment to working together in the future. So with that, we'll take questions.